Jivamukti Yoga um, at Air Yoga. Most of the classes are Jivamukti classes, otherwise we also offer Vinyasa classes. We actually ask this young teacher if it is important to follow tradition. I think it's very important to follow a tradition. Um, a lineage is what gives your teaching the juice. Because all you can teach is what you have learned from your teachers. And especially with something like the practice of yoga, it is thousands of years old. And this information has been passed on from teacher to teacher to teacher. So I think to have a lineage and a tradition is exceptionally important when it comes to the content of what you're teaching. How do you proceed for the transmission of the tradition? So uh, we offer a teacher training program at Air Yoga. It is a vinyasa teacher training program. And um, we teach our students exactly what we have learned from our teachers. We teach them how to chant, how to communicate the yoga philosophy in a practical way. We teach them how to do yoga assists, so hands-on assists, and to really teach to whoever is in the room. So um, yes, we have a three-month teacher training program, and that's how we uh, pass on the lineage from our teachers to the new teachers. How did you start practicing yoga? I started practicing yoga when I was about 19 years old. I was at university and I was studying um, my degree in philosophy and um, I went to a yoga class and I was quite stressed with everything that was going on in my life and when I was lying in Shavasana I realized that whatever this practice was that I was doing, um, it was helping me to escape uh, my mind. It was helping me to break free of my stress and anxieties. And um, I kept practicing on and off for the next few years, but after about five years of working in uh, an advertising agency, I decided to quit my job and do a yoga teacher training, which I studied in Johannesburg in uh, 2010. And, uh, from there, I was practicing every day. I was teaching as much as I could. I was heavily inspired by the Jiva Mukti yoga tradition. And eventually, I got to go and do the 300-hour Jiva Mukti yoga teacher training in Costa Rica. And um, from there, I followed up with a 800-hour apprenticeship, which I did with my teacher in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, yes, yeah, so I, uh, I would, according to the yoga hour qualifications, I'm an 800 hour teacher. And from there I moved to Cape Town and I started teaching at Air Yoga. And what about continued education for teachers? I think it's very important to have different qualifications in the yoga traditions according to what you want to teach. Um, I don't think it ever ends. I don't think you ever stop studying. So I did my first teacher training, then I did a mentorship, then I did another teacher training, then I did an apprenticeship, and I will continue to study for the rest of my life. So as much as um, you don't have to do that, I think it's very important that you do. Cape Town is definitely a special place on earth. The mother city has a special vibration and everyone who spent a few days in the city may tell you this. Beautiful people, great land, fabulous light and great yogis. 
We met Fulvia at Yoga Zone to understand how we opened his studio there. Uh, for me personally, it's been about 15 years, 15 or 16 years. Um, we've had the studio for 14 years. So as I entered into the more regular practice of yoga, it really inspired me to want to start something that people can really find a dedicated space to do that. I think that you know. I think that yoga land is becoming bigger and bigger. It's it's really growing. Uh, the the formal sector of yoga, maybe measure it as a as a kind of business sector, if you like, has been consistently the biggest single growing sector uh, in the United States for a very long time. Um, it's the one that's expanding the quicker, uh, the faster. Of course, um, in American society, commercialization and access to a much broader, bigger population group means that it can expand a lot quicker. But where I see the future, uh, coming back to your question about yoga, is I think that we're in a very interesting uh, period in that for until recently, um, maybe the last a hundred years ago, um, yoga was really about tradition, about the lineage of teacher, school, pupil, study, process. Uh, it, had a, it had a dogma associated with it and a kind of disciplined disciple relationship, which is very constructive and very powerful. But in a context, in a modern context, we have access to much more information. We have much broader social and uh, intellectual spectrums and and yoga is responding to that so it's becoming more contemporary while still maintaining its roots and its connections with its past but expressed in a way that is making it accessible to you and me and the person walking in the street and everybody and i think that that's really the most exciting development in yoga and that really has been in maybe we can even say in the last 20 30 years uh, one thing that I find fascinating is that, uh, you know, the president of, of uh, India, Modi, two years ago stood in front of the United Nations and made a, a very passionate speech saying we need to dedicate international awareness to yoga. And now we have, on the 21st of June, uh, annually we have International Yoga Day. That's a big thing. It's, it's officially declared. It's not a public holiday. Okay, but you know, but around the world, people are celebrating that and, and acknowledging that. Uh, I teach vinyasa, heated vinyasa, a vinyasa flow class. The vinyasa came from the Ashtanga style. So there's a lot of movement, movement coordinated with breath from one asana to the other. And then of course you throw in the heat. We take the room to about 35 or 36 degrees, which um, allows for more stretch and more, more give in the muscles and the joints, but then also with a generous flow of oxygen. What is your daily program as a teacher? I teach about between 14 and 16 classes a week. So it depends. It can be anything between one and four classes per day. Tell us, where did you learn yoga? I started, I started practicing here in Cape Town. I walked past the studio one day and I was intrigued. And I did, it wasn't this one, it was another studio. I did the trial period and it was love at first asana, I suppose. Um, I kept coming back and, and after about six, five or six years of practicing, I did my teacher's training in, in Cape Town. And that was just over a year and a half ago. I've been teaching for 18 months. Um, I think it's, in South Africa, it's very similar to the way they do it in the States. Um, your entry level training is a 200 hour course where we follow the um, uh, presidents by, of the Yoga Alliance. Within those 200 hours you have to break down physical practice, um, uh, theory, anatomy. 
After your 200 hours, it's always advised to, to start teaching a little bit and start teaching as a beginner's teacher or a new teacher. From there, you do your advanced teacher training, working up to 500 hours. And you can do that either in 50-hour modules or in 100-hour modules. And so it carries on and on and on, the course on top of course, working up from 500 then to 1,000 hours. There's so much to learn. I think it's, an, it's a for, for everything. It's never, it's never ending. There's no end goal. My, my personal practice, I, um, I like to, to go to other teachers' classes. I do my own practice three times a week maybe, and then I try to get to other teachers another three times a week to learn. My big thing is just to learn within my body and learn on the mat. What advice would you give to a new student? To breathe. <laughs> to breathe. To slow down and to breathe and to use the breath in the asanas. That's, I think, for me personally, that's the big thing. What is actually the main challenge for a new student? To get them to breathe? <laughs> no. Yeah, I think to slow down, to take, especially in, in South Africa, we have a very competitive uh, background when it comes to physical activity. And I think people view yoga as only a physical activity and exercise. But then that is a nice entry level for them into yoga and from there they take it further into the other seven limbs. Ten years ago, we only had a few studios there. Now, every district of the city has more than one, and it's permanently growing. It's almost like you need a hairdresser not far from home, and the same for a yoga studio. You change your mind, you change your body, and get a bit of happiness for an hour. Thank you. Thank you.